Welcome back to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside Dr. Bonatti, and we want to know what type of advancements are being made in spinal cord injuries. The enormous amount of damage that an individual who suffers a spinal cord injury needs to support and live with. Right. Uh, and we don't have any answers about it. But there are some studies that were done recently in Japan. Uh, what they, they were working, they were working with insects. And they decapitate the insect. And they found that there was something very curious. These insects that they didn't have brain, they still can walk. And then they start to investigate further. And they will realize that there are other centers that they can perform really without a, without the brain. They move from the insects to bigger animals just to be able to be able to dissect the nervous system All right. and understand if something different why, why the system work in, in the insects. Right. And they 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 took a couple of rats. They destroy the, the the brain on the rat, and then the rat got paralyzed. So then, what they did is they uh, the the legs of the rat was dangling, and they put a wire very close to the end of that leg, and. Then they pushed slowly the leg towards the wire, and the wire had electricity. When that happens, the electrical shock to the leg, immediately the rat moved the leg and hold it up. And what's a leg, what's a rat without brain? Okay. So they, they then, the question was, who is creating this reaction right. and, and how this reaction can be applied to humans. Correct. Well, what they did is they look at the nervous system and they, then they study the cord and the cells that they were on the top of the cord they were able to create that reaction. When they destroyed the cells, the leg was able to touch the wire and don't get the, don't get the leg up either. So those cells are neurons that they camped on the upper part of the spinal cord. But they discovered another group of cells on the lower part of the spinal cord. Okay. And those cells on the lower part of the spinal cord seems to be that they are the ones that they allowed these other cells to maintain the knowledge. So one was to create motion. The other one was to create knowledge of that action so what happened then was any time that they touched the wire, the leg went up. Then the next day, they brought the, the rat again, mm -hmm. and they put it in the same situation. They tried to put it around the wire, and the leg immediately didn't, didn't, let, didn't let the, experiment, uh, the, 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 the scientists mm -hmm. to do that. They started right. to fight it. And why did that? Because they got knowledge that it's going to be shock. So now we have one set of cells that they produce the motion and one set of cells that they have the knowledge of what you need to do mm -hmm. and what you do and what you cannot do or what you shouldn't do. That type of information today is probably an incredible information to educate paralyzed people because if we can use the cells and those cells on the top are going to create that type of a reaction, they can walk. But at the same time, they can recognize the motion, mm -hmm. avoid objects that they are on their way, 
And at the same time, the next day, they know that they can walk. So now with the knowledge they can walk, they can perform some, some type of a ambulation. So are you saying that it's both voluntary and involuntary at that point? Well, it is voluntary by the time that you have knowledge that when you put your leg down there in the electrical shock, mm-hmm. and you don't want to be shocked again. Correct. You can, and you maintain the leg up. That's, that's knowledge that you shouldn't put your leg down there. That's sure. voluntary. Mm-hmm. I am so envy of the young individuals that they are going to medicine today because the advances that you are going to see and the tremendous amount of information that is coming from the genome, this is also a situation that is associated with a gene. It's a gene that manipulates these cells, the top cells and the lower cells. So when you remove the gene, Mm -hmm. you see that the leg is dangling and is being shocked and doesn't move. And the next day you try to chuck it again and still doesn't move. So it doesn't learn anything and doesn't move either. I wonder how far away we are from uh, paralyzed human trials to see how this may work. Well, that, 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 that's years. Well, we will certainly keep a watchful eye on the innovations of spinal cord injuries and what may be on the horizon. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today. Make sure you check us out again next week. And if you would like to see more of our programs, you can search American Medicine Today on your favorite streaming apps.